Hi, and welcome back. I'm Amir Sabirovich, and you're tuning in to the next episode of Challenging the Status Quo podcast. With our episodes, we hope to inspire you to take the necessary steps and follow your heart and passion in everything you do. Today we have a special guest, a Dutchman living in Bosnia. His name is Nick Teunissen and he's director and author, a presenter and moderator, an artist in his heart and bones. Nick, welcome. Wow, wow. Amir, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you for this wonderful introduction. Uh, you're welcome. Glad that you could make it, although you're a couple of uh, thousand miles away. Um, uh, as, as I said, Dutchman living in Bosnia. Could you please tell us yeah. your story and how you got yeah. how you got there <laughs> from 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 the Netherlands to to living in Sarajevo? It's, uh... Yeah, why you should ask? Why? What why? the hell are you doing? What's wrong with you? <laughs> What's wrong with you, Nick? <laughs> and the funny thing is, I mean, that uh, even the Bosnian people ask me the same question. <laughs> so, what are you doing here, Nick? Why? Well, uh, it has everything to do with love. For uh, for the first part of my explanation, uh, my partner comes uh, uh, is originally from Sarajevo, uh, capital city of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and uh, he fled the war in 1994, came to Holland, uh, completely integrated in society, speaks the language fluently, has a very good job as a television director, the national television in Holland, uh, worked as freelancer as well. Uh, we met each other uh, in Almere, of all places, <laughs> uh, which is very near to Amsterdam, but it's not Amsterdam, which is an understatement. And uh, we met each other 12 years ago. And uh, of course, I was very interested in his story. When we first met each other, he told me where you that he came from Sarajevo. And I remembered the, the pictures and I remembered the... the uh, uh, yeah, all the horrible things that happened and were shown on television when I was a kid uh, concerning the Bosnian War, of course. Um, so he, he told me some some private things as well concerning his family and um, yeah, the way uh, his raison d'être of being in the Netherlands. And then we got a relationship, and uh, uh, after five or six years. I finally started to dig somewhat deeper in his memory because he used to talk about it. But when he talked about it, it was all superficial. He kept it away and he kept it aside. Uh, and in retrospective, I now know that he didn't want to be uh, confronted with his past and he didn't want to remember that anymore. He would go sometimes to Bosnia for two days or three days, visit his family very quickly, and then come back to the Netherlands and once again, put it all aside until uh, six years in our relationship, uh, it wasn't possible anymore. And uh, his whole past um, uh, came onto uh, came onto the surface. Uh, we talked much about it, um, but it intrigued me as well because it was a way of yeah, uh, starting to learn your partner much more than you already thought you knew him and, um, uh, and started to be intrigued by his home country and his story. And to cut the story short, <laughs> uh, we went on holiday in 2015 to Bosnia, to Sarajevo, met his parents, his family, and I fell in love with the country. So it was my second love, so to speak. And um, uh, after our vacation, we dro dro drove back home and um, I was already, I've been working all my life in the theater, uh, just like you said, as a director, etc. cetera. Um, but I felt something on the Balkans that I uh, think we've lost in Holland. What was that? Yeah, it, it was a good question. It was, um, uh, uh, you say in Dutch, you say Heimweh, uh, which is German Sehnsucht. Uh, Homes homesick. Homesickness, thank you very much, sorry. Um, homesick. And um, when we were home, we, we at first didn't know what it was, but um, we, we were digging in the, into that feeling. And then all of a sudden I said, I think I fell in love with your country. People are very emotional. People are living from their hearts still. And I think that's what I found. Uh, that's what I recognize, what I love uh, and which I thought I'd lost in Holland. And I said, I, I, I really love your country. And uh, and he said, like, uh, yeah, I miss it as well. And then I said, well, why don't we go to your country then? Why don't we go and live there for a year? 
and the rest is ancient history. So that was the first incentive uh, to go over there. And uh, because of, yeah, because of falling in love with this country and with this principle of, of, um, of, 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 uh, of warmth, <laughs> of emotion, living from your heart, and um, and of course it 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 gave us uh, it gave Ismir the the chance to uh, confront himself with his past, of course, which was one of the most important things to go back. And for me, it gave m- me the time to finally write the play that I always wanted to write about his story, our story together, and that's uh, uh, now since two years uh, our. Uh, theater uh, play Enkeltje Hollandia, One Way Ticket to Holland, translated. Um, so that's a story short, sorry for my long expose, but that's that's why we why we went back and that's why I'm living out here. Yeah. No, so so in, in regards to challenging the status quo, what the name is of this podcast, you are challenging status quo because people from Bosnia are trying to flee the country and you're actually yeah. moving from a perfectly from financial perspective for you're moving to to Bosnia, yeah. or you went to Bosnia. Yep. So, uh, how has that been? So, 2015, 2016, you moved. Yeah. So, we're three, four yeah, years later. On. Yeah, and coming back as uh, uh, just like you said, like uh, uh, coming into Bosnia Herzegovina as a prince, of course, because if you compare it, uh, my standard of living and my possibilities as uh, a Dutch guy. Uh, are so, uh, uh, so so large in contrast. Can I say that in English? Or, or such contrast when it comes to uh, 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 to the the possibilities that young people or Bosnian people have. So it was in a way a culture shock because I think I'm if I'm able to say that about myself or that I'm a caring and liberal person, but. I think I knew nothing whatsoever. When you're living in such a country, you really see how uh, incredibly rich we are in Holland uh, when it comes to healthcare, when it comes to uh, 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 having a job, when it comes to uh, making a living and having a, a normal life, living a normal life. So that was one of the first great contrasts, poverty, of course, uh, a large gap between the haves and the have-nots. And I know in Holland there's also this problem between uh, the rich and the poor, but uh, that's an understatement when it comes to Bosnia. <laughs> um, so that that was really a contrast, um, but it made me to think like like uh, how can I help or what could be my uh, 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 my purpose here in Bosnia? And I think it uh, with being humble, by the way, but I think. It is my task to uh, uh, to humbly connect two cultures with each other, and to to uh, to give them both the best of both worlds because that's what I've experienced right now. So, I, I hope it makes sense when I. When it, it it does definitely. And and how do you uh, how do you uh, so you're paddling between the Netherlands and Bosnia continuously? Yeah, yeah. I assume for work and for business. Yeah. So and are you working in Bosnia? Yep, I am, and and uh, uh, I've right now I've I've focused all my creative work uh, on uh, Bosnia as a theme, like uh, concerning not only the war and the aftermath, but also the the current state of of affairs and when it comes to not only politics but also culture. And I hope I can, uh, uh, however humble. I want to stress that one, however humble it may be, but I, I hope I can inspire young people in Bosnia to be proud of the country and to uh, to really start using uh, the opportunities they really have here. Because if you look at this country, it's, it's uh, you, you already know it, Avid, but it, it has so many opportunities when it comes to nature, when it comes to uh, uh, tourism, when it comes, there are uh, there are so many opportunities for young people to to jump in to. But I think people are tired here in Bosnia, so uh, we have to do something about that. <laughs> and, and and how? Um, what is your what is your experience while doing this? Do you do you think it, uh, does it cost a lot of energy? Yeah, so, yeah, it does because a lot of people are uh, cynical, um, and I think it has to do with uh, uh, just like when you sport and you've been sporting too long, your your muscles just 
cramp and, and become overtrained. And I think it's the same with fatigue, being fatigued, being, uh, um, being tired. And it, 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 because usually when, when people from abroad look at Bosnia or the Balkans, they say, yeah, the lazy people and they're doing nothing. And, but, uh, these are people, and I think people in Holland, um, in the Western part of Europe have to realize that these are people who, uh, who just came out of for war and it's not to victimize them because they're very, uh, uh, uh very vigilant and no, no, not vigilant, very, very, uh, uh, very strong people, by the way, but they're tired, tired of fighting, tired of, of building, rebuilding society, etc. So there is not much energy left within the current state of affairs to, uh, uh, uh to um to get to the next level so i think that 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 uh, help from abroad uh, is necessary in order to make a change within society i believe there is even an article that the future of the balkan region is not in a people that reside there but in the people that went away yeah, and yeah. want to come back to build up yeah. the country yeah, yeah. and and, and taking, the, uh, taking this combination into account you're a dutchman living in bosnia in the balkans yeah. um you probably redefined how success looks like to you so c- yeah. could you please yeah. share how <laughs> how success looks like to you oh man uh i think it's a very personal thing but i uh to to, to make it a a general topic i think that uh success to me is um uh realizing uh, uh, or, or making the best of all the opportunities you have in life like completely realizing yourself is that, the, is that i hope that doesn't yeah, make this, sense. The, the, I, I, this is for artists because artists are always doing that what they're passionate about so actually for <laughs> most people uh, they're doing their job but an artist is doing what is yeah. li- lives and resides in his heart so um yeah. when they are able True. to pre- to, True, to, to perform um they're living their dream right and if they can mi- make money from it yeah. then yeah. <laughs> that is success and it's even yeah. better. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Absolutely true. But I really do believe that uh, every uh, that success for everybody uh, 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 or that the general uh, definition of success could be uh, try to uh, uh, try to achieve your full potential. That's what I wanted to say. Yes. And that could be everybody. And, 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 I, uh, and I do think that everybody is an artist so that everybody has like creativity. And when you look at uh, uh, the moment in which we had our childhood, everybody is like a little artist, but we tend to forget it during the during our later uh, period in life. And uh, we had to re- rediscover your child in yourself. It sounds like a little bit tri- uh, tribal, but I think from that perspective, you can make every every job successful. Yeah, well, um, uh, if I can mirror on that one, uh, I refuse to grow up. So I always say I'm like a, 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 a very, very big child. And when I'm yeah. playing with my son, is he's seven? That is, I can, I can relate. I'm all Fantastic. there. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely true, and I, I think that because they think out of the box, and they they um, and they do whatever they like, and I, I think uh, that that's also a very important element which you should take into account when it comes to success as well. Doing really what you uh, like most, and searching for opportunities within that, because if you do the, the, the if you if you if you only work for your mortgage or only work for your car, and that's the we started to speak about that at the beginning of our podcast. Like, uh, uh, if you you have to work for your heart, that's it, and then the money will follow. And people will say, "Yeah, you're like a prince when you do that." But I can, sorry, there's there's one thing in my life I can really state is that I've experienced it myself, and I uh, I did that. <laughs> I just threw away my job. I just walked out of my job from one day into the next. I was a director at the at the theater with a good salary, and it did make me happy anymore. And I had the experience in 2015, like I have to go to the Balkans. I don't know why, but I love it. And I think all the stories that lie within the Balkans or are present in the Balkan have to be told. And so that was my artistic heart pumping. Um, and I thought, oh, just let us let us go. Why not? And we threw everything aside, our home 
our jobs, everything. And we just went. And right now I'm living in a, in a beautiful place in, in Saudi Arabia, just in the, in the outside of um, just 15 kilometers from the, from the old center. It's beautiful. And if you would have told me that four years ago, I would have thought like, well, this man's crazy. But uh, if you follow your heart, you can really achieve everything without money, believe me. <laughs> Money follows. Yeah. So, in, in fact, your challenging status quo was actually uh, going against linearity of life, getting a job, having a mortgage, yeah. and living yeah. happily ever after by saying, yeah. I have a passion. I fell in love, your second love. And you just yeah. said, okay, I'm going to put, put an end to all of this misery that I'm experiencing right now and chase my heart. And, yeah, and this yeah, is yeah, what you yeah, did. Exactly. Yeah, and you live to tell it, tell about it, <laughs> and I live to tell about it. <laughs> yes, I did. Even in this country, <laughs> absolutely. Awesome. And what is your wish, your goal, like, like, and, and and how do you try to achieve this? I mean, you maybe you told us, you know, bringing these two countries together, um, uh, uh, letting you to experience there are possibilities, but but when we say, hey. Uh, your your dot on the horizon. Super, yeah. My dot on the horizon would be uh, to, uh, uh, first of all, to leave the world a little bit better behind when I die than when I found it, <laughs> however humble that may be, because it sounds very ide idealistic, but I, sorry, I, I believe in that uh, in that passion, and I hope a lot of people do, and a lot of people do, by the way, uh, making the world a little bit better than when we found it. And for me, when it comes to uh, the moment in which I'm living now, I'm 37, <laughs> is that I really want to, uh, uh, to uh, connect uh, East and West because I think we can learn uh, from each other when it comes to uh, our cultural opinion, but also in the way in which we live life. Because I think, like in the West, we're uh, we're too busy with money and too busy with uh, with with materialistic things. And in the eastern part of, of Europe, especially on the Balkans, for example, people uh, do have that uh, uh, emotional side. They cultivate cultivate the, the emotional side of the spirit much more than we do in the West. But they could use somewhat uh, more planning. Uh, like we do in the West, for example. So, Pro <laughs> processes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we we could learn from each other, and I really hope uh, that that's my dot on the horizon that I can uh, uh, raise more awareness for the Western part of of Europe because I think it's a totally forgotten subject. Uh, I sometimes mm -hmm. think that people think like, oh, the war is over. We put everything we had in an in a in an ordinary and we put it into. Uh, into our uh, administration closet and that's it and uh, but there is so much more we have to do yeah i agree totally it's like a, a, a very individualistic society uh, living next to each other yeah. nine to five and celebrating weekend yeah. and I always yeah, think exactly if you're yeah. celebrating weekend your shit is broke uh <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah 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 uh, yeah I, yeah um but it's, it's a funny thing because it, it it has to be of course in balance and if you look at for example now you by the way you know everything about it but if you uh, the bostian family is huge and and uh, people are living together and people are taking care of grandma and grandma's living upstairs and um uh, but in a way they're far more social than we are right now in the west uh, but with with, with m much less to spend. Exactly. So that's uh, thank you very much for that addition. Yes, yeah, adding that because that's that's absolutely true. They will share everything they have, and uh, I always say like the difference between Holland and the Balkans is like if you ring a doorbell in Holland at five o'clock, people will open and will say, "Oh, we're eating. Come back within an hour or so." And when you do that in the Balkans at five o'clock, people say, "We're eating. Do you want to eat? What do you eat?" Etc. That's that's the difference, which doesn't say that people in Holland are not just generous by the way so but it's um it's it um it, it shifted a kind it shifted a little bit and i think that people in holland are suffering from that as well it's the system of course which 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 is uh, ah, which is suffocating people Every, everything is functional 
Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's exactly well, what we Let's meet you. Take your order, and you yeah. you you put it in your <laughs> in your agenda when you're going to for a cup of coffee. Exactly. Uh, yeah. uh, and with eating has a specific t- time. Watching TV yeah. has a specific. Everything is organized in uh, <laughs> in, in boxes. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And that's that can sometimes it, be be suffocating. And the, uh, so, so you're living your dream at this point in in the in the country you love. Um, but uh, to the other side, what is what is your biggest failure? So looking through your throughout your career, uh, or a favorite one, you probably heard it on other podcasts. I know people don't have favorite failures, but then again, <laughs> who oh, knows? <laughs> oh yes, please. <laughs> I think I think it's fantastic to be vulnerable. It's one of. Uh, of the most beautiful things there is. When you ask me um, what is my biggest failure, I think now I'm 37. I, I already mentioned that one. Um, and then looking back at my young life, I think that my biggest failure until now was not believing in myself and uh, uh, being far too, uh, too insecure about uh, the things I could achieve with art. Um, always thinking that I am dependent on uh, people who write better than I do or people who act better than I do, people who direct better than I do. And uh, uh, that's not the case. So um, uh, that was my biggest failure, to think that uh, being certain of things makes you arrogant or makes you, which is not the case, of course. It just but it, it has to do with experience that you could say, well, oh, I can direct or I can write and people like it. Or, and, um, and now finally I put that aside, but it took me 37 years <laughs> to put it aside <laughs> and, and, 80%. Uh, which source has helped you with this? Uh, my partner foremost. Um, he's very critical, but he was also very critical about, uh, about that, personality trait so to speak of me and um, going to the Balkans really helped me because um, I just thought of this play uh, which I wanted to make and uh, I thought let's do it and we did and right now we are organizing an international tour for next year Uh, we're going to Dayton, Ohio on the 21st of November to play there as well, because that's the symbolical date on which the uh, the war uh, treaty or the war uh, accords were reached, ending the Bosnian War. So that's going to be the end of our tournée. We are performing it also in 11 cities in Bosnia next year during the summer. Um, to cut the story short, when I look back on that on that achievement, I think, wow, look what you can achieve if you really believe in it. And it sounds like a trivial point, but it is not. It is. Uh, it's. It really has to do with uh, with with be- believing in what you can do and following your heart. It's just as easy as that. Even though you fail, sometimes you have to get up and just continue believing and and thriving. Oh yes, yeah, completely. Yeah, completely. Yeah, it's just like sport. Yeah, I, I think it's it's that simple, and that's why it's so difficult <laughs> because it you have to let go of things, and that's also something I learned. So I also had my uh, uh, insecurities and thinking like, well, but I've got this fixed job, and I'm a director now in the theater, and uh, I can pay my rent, and um, um, uh, I have a home, and uh, but I had to let everything go in order to. To, to really follow my heart and achieve uh, my full potential. That's it. Yeah, you need to, to disrupt yourself before you yeah, can yeah. Um, improve yeah. yourself. And I know it's very difficult because, look, I don't have children yet, um, but uh, which makes it easier as well, because if your children have to go to school and you, you have to pay for the books, and, you, and even in Holland, because people say like in Holland, that's the Bosnian way, by the way, uh, young Bosnian people look at Holland like Valhalla, like, oh, there you have so much money, and when you earn money, you can buy a, a very beautiful apartment building in, in Amsterdam, blah, 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 and they say, well... Come and live with me for one month in Holland and we'll talk again because uh, you have to earn a lot of money. You earn a lot of money, but you have to spend a lot of money as well. Um, so it's not Valhalla, 
uh, you have to you have to make an effort for it. So people in Holland are also working very hard to have a normal uh, uh, standard of living. Um, but if you you should watch out that you don't start working for your mortgage and that you don't start working for your uh, for your second car or so. The why not do with one? Why not? Uh, I think children love to bicycle to school. Or should you have a Hummer to bring them? It's a, and um, you you may if you like cars, it's super. It's not being judgmental, but um, uh, if you really want to achieve your dreams, you will follow your heart. You have to let go of some things. So, you, well, it's it's um, like with everything. I think uh, the home it's uh, there are only bricks. And a family Absolutely. is what makes it. Yeah. And this is for the same for the car. You when you're driving your car on your own, yeah. um, it's, it's uh, it may it may 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 be satisfy you in a in a simple way. But yeah. when you're driving it with your partner yeah. or with your kid, etc., yeah. it's a total different emotion. I mean, so you hit it, you I, hit I it on a nail. It's absolutely beautiful what you said, and and I can only shout Amen. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really true, and I uh, it it uh, it's funny that you mention it because I put away we put away our home, and I never missed it. That's bizarre, and it has all all everything to do with what you just said. Home is where my family is, where my friends are, where my love is, and um, I'm just as happy uh, in the mountains with nothing. And this is really true because when we we used to go into the mountains because my partner's parents have like a lovely little cottage in the mountains, but ah, you have to cook for yourself. You have to uh, plant your vegetables. You have to do everything you, you don't have in Holland because sometimes the water doesn't run or there's no electricity. But when you're together, it's super. And, and, and you ha- you have to gather woods. Yeah, yeah. And I have to chop. <laughs> I have to chop it, and I. Yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. But it's absolutely true. <laughs> hey, what are you curious about right now? Uh, right now, uh, uh, I'm very curious uh, about um, the way in which uh, Bosnia can change, uh, the way in which society can change. Um, when it comes to young people who really want to make an effort for it, because there are a lot of young people in Bosnia who really fight for their freedom, who uh, really uh, want this multicultural uh, system back, which they lost in the war, their parents lost in the war, and they're really fighting for that, even losing their lives. Um, so that's where that's the topic I'm now very interested in. in, in uh, how is that going to work for them in the near future as well? And how can we help them achieve that? Because it's really, it's, uh, when you look now at Bosnia, the people are fantastic, but the system is, is bizarre. It's completely corrupt. Yeah, it's rotten, rotten from the top down. And it, it, it prevents young people from climbing up the social ladder. Because if you had to give the, the listeners an example, if you, if you want to be uh, successful in, uh, in what, what business soever when it comes to state business you you have to be part of a political system you have to uh yeah you have to achieve your uh, lick your way up what we say in dutch sorry for being so bluntly forward but and that's very horrible because you cannot be critical and you you, you have to uh you have to swallow everything and um that's what young people are fed up with and they're leaving the country and i think uh, especially politicians should prevent that from happening, but politicians are not doing that here. But um, the, the people who have companies are, so there is hope. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I believe so, and uh, I've told you about this organization, and uh, this is yeah. th- there are a lot of people from the outside coming in that actually yep. share your nobility and uh, the dream to you know to help these the, the youth excel. Uh, and and thank you. Yeah. there, so that's uh, that's really a yeah. noble cause to participate yeah. in. Th- thank you very much, Ami. And that's one of the, if I may say, so one of the, uh, the topics of my own country, the Ho- <laughs> your country as well, Holland, which I am very proud of. Because uh, to give the example, to give you as an example as well, you're doing fantastic work uh, <clears throat> from your heart, and you're helping people uh, across the. Uh, uh, the the boundary, which is very bad English, by the way. You're helping people in other countries and, for example, on the Balkans to achieve their dreams as well. And a lot of people in Holland
Holland are very generous. So, and they are doing exactly what you do, but also in Holland, which is also very necessary when it comes to all elderly people or disabled people or whatever. So that's, that's the Dutch spirit, which I really love. And then I came over here and uh, I thought I saw, and I still do a lot of beauty, even though uh, there's a lot of evil uh, around uh, when it comes to politicians. Excuse me for saying that one, but it's 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 horrible, and so it's it's always there. But there is also a lot of beauty, and I think that the majority of this my that's my convic uh, that's my uh, mantra, as it were, which with, with which I live my life is that the majority of the people, whether it be in Asia or in Bosnia or in Holland or whatever, just want to live their lives in peace. There's the majority of people just want to have a normal life and want to have happy kids. Uh, and that's it. Um, and there's this little s uh, top layer of, of rotten apples, so to say. Um, so there is still a lot of hope. And even in, in a country which has just risen after 25, not just risen, but is busy putting itself together uh, these last 25 years, which is a very hard task, of course. And I, I always compare it with our country, with Holland. Like I say, like, like, like look at what, where we came from. In, after uh, we were liberated in 45, it took years, decennia, to, to reconstruct Holland and, um, uh, and to start speaking about what happened in the war, etc. All those kind of things. They need time, and they, but they also need help. And we were helped by Marshall. <laughs> And if the Marshall Plan wasn't there, we wouldn't have had the money to uh, get up again. And uh, and the same is with Bosnia Herzegovina. It's it's not done within 25 years. People think like yeah. Uh, sometimes people say yeah. Well, we've put uh, uh, millions of, of, of euros or dollars into the country, and now you should be fine. And that's not the way it works. Of course, it's it's the mentality that has to. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it, it, it takes time and it will take yeah. time. Um, and I believe this is the most important message. Let the past be the past and just forward to the future and make it, make yeah. it, make it great again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. What would be, <laughs> what would be your key takeaway? So you living in Bosnia, having this uh, experience uh, to our listeners, what would you like to, to share? To give them as like uh, inspire inspirements of uh, as a closure of this uh, of this interview. Yes, that's a, thank you for giving me that opportunity. I think uh, what I'd like to uh, like to say, uh, which is for me a very important topic when it comes to the Balkans, but also when it comes to uh, uh, my uh, my artistic work so to speak is the topic of freedom and also uh, the, the topic of peace which is combined with it and um, that freedom is not only the absence of war so to speak uh, and when it comes to freedom this is going to be my takeaway i think that uh, freedom cannot simply mean uh, doing whatever strikes you at the moment uh, because that way uh, you're just a slave to any whim or passing fancy uh, I think that uh, real freedom involves control over your life as a whole. If we're speaking about that one, uh, learning to make plans. <laughs> uh, let's do that in the Balkans and promises and decisions which, which go with that and to take responsibility for your actions and consequences. And I think that's the takeaway I would like to give uh, not only to Dutch people, but also to, especially to the Bosnian people. <laughs> Yeah, th thank you very much. That was uh, that was really be beautiful. Um, it was really a pleasure, and thank you for your story. Um, hey, I will just I, I will just ask you the one last question. The takeaway was beautiful, but can you name the cities you'll be presenting Enkelche Hollandia in in the upcoming summer? Yes, I will. Thank you very much. I will in in, uh, in the Balkans, eh? In the Balkans, yes. Yeah, well, here we go. We are going to be in uh, Sarajevo, of course. We are going to perform at the Tunnel of Hope, which is a museum nowadays, but uh, it was the uh, uh, yeah the tunnel that kept the city alive, so to speak, during the war, which is a very uh, intense place to be. Beautiful place, by the way. Uh, so Sarajevo, we're going to Mostar, to uh, uh, the, the famous city with the bridge, which was destroyed in 1993, but completely rebuilt, and it's a beauty once again. So Mostar, uh, Stolac, we're going to uh, as well, Tuzla, uh, 
uh, we are going to, uh, let me see, uh, the Banja Luka. We are going to Srebrenica. And we are going to uh, Belgrade, which is Serbia, Serbia, by the way, of course. Going to Biatch as well, my friend. Yep. It's going to be from the 15th of June next year until the 15th of July. That's going to be the the tour time span, so to speak. As soon as uh, as Nick has his links, uh, we will reshare it um, via the podcast and under the podcast. Nick, it was really a pleasure. Thank you very much for your time and story. And I wish you an awesome evening. Thank you very much, Amir. And thank you so much for your opportunity to speak out. Thank you very much for listening to the sixth episode of Challenging the Status Quo podcast with Nick Donison, straight from Sarajevo. Next week, we will be talking with Miriam Boxer. She was born curious and this curiosity led to a career adventure. Tune in next week to hear her story. Until next week, I'm your host Amir Sabirovic and I wish you an awesome weekend.